Force, the second tier group from the component giant SRAM is slimmed down across the board for 2023. Most notably, the new levers have a smaller shape. The hood is the size of the new rival. The levers and the shift button themselves are a little bit smaller. SRAM has shaved off weight about 100 grams from the group. They've eliminated the contact pad adjustment. They've eliminated the ability to plug in a wired satellite port. The price, unfortunately, has not decreased, uh, but it stays the same as current force. And even the graphics have been slimmed down. The new iridescent treatment on the levers and elsewhere on the group is a bit tidier. Here's a look at what is new for SRAM Force 2023, which you will start seeing now on road bikes, gravel bikes, cyclocross bikes, from $4,000 up to $10,000. As you probably know, Force is the number two group, sits in between the top end red and the third tier rival in the SRAM range. I was talking to Dan Stefuk, the road product manager for SRAM, who said rival still makes up the majority of sales for OEM SRAM, that's original equipment manufacturers, so parts that go on bikes. Uh, and then that's followed closely by Force, and then red is the third most popular group in terms of sales to bike brands. Another thing that uh, Dan said that surprised me was how many power meters are now being spec'd on bikes. SRAM bought the uh, power meter maker Quark a number of years ago, and those meters are now integrated nicely into the SRAM road and mountain groups. And he said nearly 50% of bikes now, at least on the higher end, are coming built up with Quark power meters. As a fan of riding and training with power, I think that's a positive thing. So not everything was reductive in the latest group. SRAM also beefed up a few things, most notably the chain rings. Force now comes with the integrated chain ring spider option that you've seen on red. Dan said this was in response to both OEM and pro riders and everyday riders, uh, you know, asking for a bit more stiffness in front shifting, which he says this situation has improved. Also, you've got a bigger chain ring combo option than before. Previously, 48-35 was the biggest combo. Now you've got a 50-37. So that's in line with what many pro riders are using on the red groups. And we're also gonna see pro riders, Dan says, using this SRAM force group now. For a bit of context, numbers. 50 may not sound like a big chain ring, but you gotta remember SRAM goes down to that small 10 tooth cog in the back and a 50-10 is a bigger gear than a 5311. Uh, one resource I like to use is bikecalc.com. I'll put a link uh, in the description down below so you can get in and uh, put in numbers so you can compare what you've got with what uh, other options are if you're considering jumping from uh, one component group like SRAM or Campidiolo to SRAM just to understand what those different numbers mean. I get kind of lost myself and that's why I use bikecalc.com. It's a handy resource. At the rear, Instead of having two cage length derailers for road, you've got one that handles up to a 36 cassette. And then for the SRAM Explorer group, like the gravel groups that's coming on bikes like this Ventum here, uh, you can handle up to the 1044 cassette. SRAM also made some tweaks in that same neighborhood in the back of the bike with the cassette shifting over from the black finish to this nickel chrome finish, which SRAM says will help with longevity shifting smoothness and perhaps make it a bit quieter. Again, that was based on feedback from riders and brand partners. You've got a couple power meter options with the new SRAM Force. You've got the direct mount chain ring style, which goes for $800 for the full crank set. And then you've got a spindle version, which is cheaper and that is a left side only. You know, think stages or four eyes where it takes the left leg power and multiplies it by two. That crank set style is $485, and then you can get upgrade kits in both styles for existing groups if you want to upgrade down the road. So let's talk shifters, which are kind of the big story here. They're smaller, both not just in reducing the height of the top of the hood, but uh, the circumference of the grip, which for me is a positive thing. Also, you know, reducing the shape of the paddle a bit, 
uh, trying to give you a little more room when you're breaking so you're not pinching your fingers or when you're you know, potentially even hitting the bar. In my experience, sometimes SRAM groups need to be bled a little more often than Shimano row groups, and having a brake pull all the way back and hit your finger or hit the bar is not a good feeling. So having a little more room in my mind is, is a positive thing for sure. Getting rid of the wired satellite blips, that's not something I've often used, but you know, occasionally we'll plug in those blips when I put on arrow bars doing the dreaded arrow thing for some gravel events. Of course, you have the wireless option now for the satellite shifter. So you still have the same functionality, but if you've got wired blip shifters, those are not compatible with the new force. There's some visual changes too. In addition to the branding, the rainbow finish, which we first saw from SRAM on Mads Peterson's bikes after he won the world championships a few years ago is now available in a couple spots, most notably the cassette and the chain. So that's a cool bit of visual bling. So what does this feel like to ride? Well, pretty darn similar to the existing stuff. Uh, I have ridden the Rival and I appreciated the, the smaller hood shape. This has that you know exact same dimension here and then you know, some further reductions you know, at the shifter paddle for clearance. The shift logic remains unchanged Right side puts you into a harder gear, left side into an easier gear. And if you've got a two by, pressing both moves the front chain ring. If you wanna run a dropper post and you have a one by, pressing both uh, activates the dropper post. I'm going to be riding this bike for the next few days and then we'll be racing it at the Mid-South in Oklahoma on March 11. So you can watch for a ride video after that. Next up though, I'm headed to Belgian Waffle Ride, Arizona, where I will be riding a Pivot Vault gravel bike. And I have no idea what group is on there. Maybe it's the new force, maybe it's an old group. I've got no idea, but you can watch for a race and gear report video next week from Belgian Waffle Ride, Arizona. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. I thank you for subscribing. And remember, enjoy that ride.